Good evening. I'd like to call this plan commission meeting to order. It is 6.38. Has this, well, all commissioners are here tonight except... Our personal can move all up. What are you Yeah. Alice Norlick? Yes. David Amenta? Mm -hmm. Dan Wicklin? Yes. Sangeeta Patel? Here. Leah Blankenship? Tim Hansman? Therese Klein, Barbara Kylie Miller, Eric Kudo. Yes. Thank you. Has this meeting been publicly noticed? Yes. All right, our first agenda item, and, and I'm supposed to remind people to please talk into the microphone so that the recording can pick your voice up. Yeah, don't even know if the microphones are working, so if you can just talk louder. Okay. <laughs> just do both. <laughs> um, the first item is approval of the September 25th, 2018 meeting minutes. Move to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second. I have a any further discussion? Yeah, I have that comment. Um, um okay, sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. It was in, it was for the, the traffic the but the study is first referred to as a traffic study. And um, I just think it, it's not a traffic study, it's a parking study. And because that was one of the points we made later, like he didn't talk about traffic at all, he just looked at parking. So I just wanted to not refer to it as a traffic city. Okay. So anywhere where it is referred to, parking is good. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. For both the new and the old study, like they did two studies, they were, they were both parking. There was, there was a recent one that, the most recent one that they talked about was a, uh, you know, I specifically asked, like, there had been, and I referred to a prior traffic study that indicated mm -hmm. the level of service on that intersection as being E, I think. Mm -hmm. So there was a prior traffic study, but this one was the only, and then one. he said, well, the engineer told me just to do parking. And okay. I'm like, okay, that's fine, but let's not call it a traffic study because it's a parking study. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the only change I have. Okay. If that's acceptable, I have a motion and a second to motion, including the mm -hmm. incorporating the comments. Yep, trustee. Trustee. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries by zero. Yep. Okay. The next agenda item is a public hearing on the conditional use application for a proposed mental health clinic at commercial property 3970 North Oakland Avenue of units 402 and 404, business owner, family healing and wellness clinic, LLC. Do I have my cheat sheet for public parents? Yes. So I'd like to open the first public hearing. I, I could read the, um, the application off for the benefit of those in attendance. Um, it is also in your packet. Um, so the project and parcel overview, Gerilyn Bell Skaggs, doing business as Family Healing and Wellness Center, has applied to operate a comprehensive outpatient mental wellness clinic at 3970 North Oakland Avenue, Suites 402 and 404. The property is owned B1 Commercial Use District. The B1 Commercial Use District is intended to provide the village a mix of retail, service, restaurant, office, and residential uses in a pedestrian-friendly, active shopping environment. Per Village Code 535-27D, clinics are allowed to operate within the B1, B2, B3, and B5 districts as a conditional use, subject to the review and approval of the Plan Commission after a public hearing. The parcel is currently developed with a 45,800 square foot seven seven-story multi-tenant commercial building containing approximately 15 other tenants. The parcel also has um, 139 surface parking, lot spa surface parking spaces that are shared amongst various users. No exterior modifications to the building or lot are proposed with this application. Proposed operations, the Family Healing and Wellness Center is seeking to expand their current operations. The proposed space of approximately 2,000 square feet, which will encompass the entire east half of the fourth floor, will allow them to house up to four in-house licensed psychotherapists as opposed to their current space that only allows for two. 
They seek to fully materialize their vision by having an all-encompassing space to provide behavioral health services, play therapy, and wellness and health coaching. FHWC is currently in its third year of business. The founder and owner, Gerilyn Bell Skaggs, has over 15 years of experience providing mental health services in New Jersey and Wisconsin. Prior to enter entering private practice, Mr. Bell Skaggs was providing mental health counseling services for a local agency. FHWC will be operated Monday through Friday, uh, 10 a.m. through 7 p.m. FHWC currently employs three people, but will staff up to six in the proposed location. FHWC expects each clinician to see up to one client per hour. Parking, uh, per Village Code 53547D6, medical and dental offices require four spaces per practitioner, plus one space for each additional employee at the time of greatest number of employees present. Based on proposed operations, this would require 18 off-street parking stalls, um, and the site has 139 surface level stalls to be shared amongst all tenants. Review and approval. Um, I'll, I'll just finish this quickly. Uh, per, five, per Village Code 53525, the Village Planning Commission shall review the site, existing and proposed structures, architectural plans, neighboring uses, parking areas, driveways, lo driveway locations, highway access, traffic generation and circulation, drainage, sewerage, and water systems, and proposed operation. Conditions such as landscape and architectural design, type of construction, construction commencement and completion dates, sureties, lighting, fencing, planting screens, operational controls, hours of operation, improved traffic circulation, deed restrictions, highway access restrictions, increased yard or parking requirements may be required by the Village Planning Commission upon its finding that these are necessary to fulfill the purpose and intent of this chapter. Furthermore, per 53525C, no conditional use permit shall be authorized by the Planning Commission unless such, such commission shall find that one, the establishment, maintenance, or operation of the conditional use will not be detrimental to the, or endanger the public health, safety, morals, comfort, or general welfare. Two, the conditional use will not be injurious to the use and enjoyment of other property in the immediate vicinity for the purpose already permitted, nor substantially diminish or impair the property values in the neighborhood. Three, that the establishment of the conditional use will not impede the normal, or normal and orderly development and improvement of the surrounding property for uses permitted in the district or have a negative impact on the diversity or type of businesses located in the district. Four, adequate utilities, access roads, drainage, and or necessary facilities have been, have been or are being provided. Five, adequate measures have been or will be taken to provide ingress and egress so designed as to minimize traffic congestion in the public streets. Six, the conditional use shall in all other aspects conform to the applicable regulations of the district in which it is located except as such regulations may in each, in each instance be modified by the Board of Trustees pursuant to the recommendations of the Plan Commission, and seven, the condition use is in accordance with and subject to all the applicable laws and regulations. Staff comments, based on review of the application and existing site conditions, staff has no objection to proposed operations. The applicant has worked with building inspectors to obtain the appropriate occupancy permit subject to approval of the conditional use. Thank you, and the applicant isn't here today? Correct. Okay. Um, do you want to tell us about the three communications that we received? So yes, um, I, I did receive three um, communications that were placed at your desk and will be entered in the public record. The first one from Kay and George um, Bershenny um, of 1818 East Charlotte Boulevard, Unit 310, provides their general support um, for, the, for the proposed operations. They have no problem with the Healing Wellness Center operating on Oakland Avenue, um, in short. The second one um, is from Mike Walbert, also at 1818 East Shore Boulevard. Um, he's providing a letter of opposition for the reasons mentioned in the email. I can read them if you'd like, otherwise they will be entered into, into the record um, as an attachment to the minutes. And lastly, Patricia Winter, um, I believe also at 1818 Eastwood, um, the condo building next door, also has provided some um, letters of a letter of objection. Thank you. Do I close the public hearing or do I ask for a commissioner? Uh, it, well, I would just for the record ask it. Obviously, there's nobody here yep. to ask if there's any comments and then we can close. Okay. Um, I see there's nobody in the audience for public comments, so I will close the record and the hearing at this time. And then do I open it up for commissioners to ask questions? Yeah, then we move into part B, which would be consideration. And uh, if you want to have someone, if you have questions or if you want to make a motion, could I have one? Sure. Okay. Um, this, this comes up a lot. I get this question a lot. Um, um, why does the Village of Shorewood uh, Code have a provision under 535.25 which gives us criteria for which we are to determine whether a conditional use is to be approved or not? 
Yet in 535.27, it defines a bunch of commercial uses um, that are favored conditional uses um, in certain areas. Well, the reason for that is they initially adopted 535.25 and said, if you're going to um, allow something that's beyond the scope of the existing zoning, this is the criteria you use. But then over time, they decided that, well, uh, there are certain types of commercial and residential uses. There's also a that's related to residential uses um, that says, um, you know, over time, we've, we've determined that these types of uses are favorable, um, but we don't want to actually add them to the underlying zoning. We want to make them absolutely um, allowed in each of these zoning areas. But we're going we're to label them essentially as favorable, but give the planning commission the, still the discretion to go ahead and um, refuse those if there's some compelling reason not to. So under 535.25, it says the following commercial uses shall be conditional uses and may be permitted as specified and sub D references the clinics, the types of clinics that we have here. So under 535.27, it's essentially defined in the code as, a, as something that would be uh, favorable in these areas, but still the ultimate discretion on whether to grant or deny is still left to the, uh, to the plan commission and, and uh, based upon uh, the totality of the circumstances and the criteria. So I just wanted to point out that under 535.27D, it is listed, it is listed in as a favorable conditional use? Correct. For specifically for uh, B1, B2, and B3 districts, and here we're talking about B3 district, right? Uh, B1. Oh, B1, excuse <coughs> oh, me. I mistake it. Commercial district. So um, a lot of times I get that question is, well, how come they give us criteria over here, but in another ordinance it says, well, you know, that's favored. So I wanted to just go explain how those two ordinances play, play together. Couldn't they be combined at some point? Um, well, I think that would certainly be up to the, to the board, but I, I think the purpose and intent behind them was to say, well, while these generally work, um, you know, um, there, there are certain issues with, um, you know, they might not work in every single square foot of this particular district. Like, you know, you wouldn't want the bar next to the Alcoholics Anonymous place, you know, it, it, whatever it might be, you know, you wouldn't want the sword factory next to the daycare or whatever it might be. So it still gives, while they say generally we think these are okay as a policy, we still want that human touch of the planning commission saying, well, you know, that, that may be true, but in this particular instance it makes no sense because we think there's specialized factors with this particular business at that location. So that's kind of why they built in an extra level. level. And just for the record, this is in the North Shore Bank building on Oakland Capital? Correct. The southeast corner of Oakland and Capital, the former North Shore Bank. Fourth floor? Fourth floor. Commissioner Kuda. Couple questions. Um, first, regarding parking, do we know how many tenants are currently in the building? We uh, approximately 15, um, but there are also some tenants in there that we identify that don't currently have commercial occupancy, and so we are updating that based on current inspection of that property. So. As of now, I would say 15, but that could be 14 or 16, depending on inspection. Okay. And then I noticed, uh, I checked the website for this company, and on the website it says that they're already operating in this space. Is that accurate, or? Yes, they're expanding. No, they're, they're located on 80th and Capitol. Correct, they should, they should not be open for operation. They have applied for occupancy. Um, they could technically get temporary occupancy based on inspection, which I believe is scheduled for tomorrow, um, I would I would think on the record, technically they have not been given permission to be open. Okay, just because I'm looking at it's a photo of the building with, please note our new location. Um, Does it say open though? Family Healing and Wellness Center is now located in Shorewood. Please note our new location with the address. <laughs> Doesn't mean they're open for business though. I have been very clear in communication that a conditional use and yeah, occupancy are required. So. Correct. No appointments for me. Probably a question I would have liked to ask. Yeah. Uh, Commissioner Dan. Also, from looking at their website, because they're not here, it seems like they their specialty is they treat children. Is it your understanding? My understanding is yes, they, I don't know, specialize in the word, but they do treat children and families, um, I don't say primarily, but a lot. 
in my understanding. Correct. Because a lot of these concerns we were going through seem focused more on, I don't know if they focused on the fact that it was children that were being treated there either. So it's not like, I mean, the concerns here seem to be a little less worrisome if it's kids that are being treated there. And that's what the website seems to show along with the new location. Correct. That is my understanding. Um, they were aware of the meeting. I actually thought they were attending. I was in communication with them all day today. I don't know if, if something happened, but um, I would have liked for them to be here to confirm that, correct? Okay. I just went out to the website. We have such a shortage of child and adolescent um, psychotherapists, and I think this is a fabulous location for that because I know there are so many parents struggling with trying to get appointments. And they're, typically it takes six months to get in, so um, I'm fully supportive of the application. Does anybody else have any? Now, I just I just have a question about <clears throat> the uh, letter from uh, email from Patricia Winter where she refers to um, the uh, uh, court records. Um, I mean, I realize that we're looking at the use, not the user. But does this have any relevance to our decision? No, and I did forward this to the police department, and they also confirmed that um, all this information is publicly accessible, but it was not deemed relevant.